so I want to cover some ideas on long form two. Just the first couple of techniques, well they're not really techniques, but the first couple of sequences of movements. Uh, first of all, let's look at the uh, meditating horse stance first of all. So, we see lots of different variations of this, this kind of thing, different hand positions. What I try to do is to clean it up. So first thing is I clean up my horse stance and make sure my knees are over the feet, bottom tucked in, and I sit into the stance. So my objective is to get an equilateral triangle between the distance between my feet and the distance to my lower down TN, which is my center of gravity. So that should be an equilateral triangle. So if I'm stood like this in a high horse, that triangle is being stretched. So I want to sit. Okay, and when we do the hand positions, this should be covering the fist rather than showing the fist. So this is what I, I do is I cover my fist this way. Now the knuckles high enough so I can see well over the top of the knuckles here. So not down to here. This represents the hand's high position, like I don't want any trouble. So if you look at Mr. Parker's first book, Kemper Karate, they start quite a few techniques from this position which I think represented that hands high position. Look more of that in a minute. So one of the other things I like to do is if I do a punch, I keep the wrist in line, obviously this is good, good engineering, but also if I'm going to be using these two big knuckles, I need to point them at the target too. So I don't want to be punching this way because then I'm presenting the small tongue knuckles to the target. So there's two alignments there's the wrist alignment on the vertical plane here, and then also on the horizontal plane here. So it's a plus sign that we're working on with this. So this needs to be in line. So when it is in alignment, that's fine. And the open-handed version, like here with the sphere hand and the form, again, should all be in alignment, okay? So when you put the two together, pop the fingers down over the top, then you have your covered fists. And now I have a triangle here, and I have a triangle there. So that kind of feels really nice and strong, okay? For me, this cleans it up, makes it a lot, uh, a lot more um, pronounced, okay? So try not to have your hands too low, because if this represents a hands high position, then they need to be very high, okay? Now, the first movement of the form is to step forwards and use an inward block. Now my point of origin is high, so therefore I must use a hammering inward block. So I step forwards, drop my elbow, and hammer forwards with the block. Elbow should be on the center line. Try not to have this hole in the middle. Get your elbow in. This back elbow is going to six o'clock. I try not to take it back too far. I kind of keep it more on the vertical center line position here, ready to go. It's loaded, ready to go forwards with the uh, finger first. So I'll hit with this one, going to my corner of my conceptual box. If I learn to do these blocks, to the conceptual box, to the corners, and stab those corners. So that's what I'm doing with this one. Boom, and I hit that corner, and then I come across, and I do my Edward Hansworth. Not forwards, okay? Because if the block hits the arm, the target's over here. You know, it's not over there. So you block his arm, and then you come across and you hit the neck. Go into your forward bow, which means you have to transition your weight forwards this way, so that you're delivering your weight behind the uh, spear hand. Okay? So I don't want to be 50-50, get your weight forwards. And then what's going to happen is my hips are going to power this spear hand here and power the back elbow. And what I like to try and do is get 90 degree angle here, because again, this should be in alignment. So not like this kind of thing that you see a lot of. Keep it really nice and aligned so that the elbow's in line with the wrist, which is in line with the knuckles and the fingers. Because this whole unit is powered by the hip. You see that? Right, 
Now, <clears throat> the next movement, my point of origin is low, it's not high, so the inward block should be a thrusting inward block this time. So I don't want to cock to block, because that's two counts. I need to go from my point of origin and just directly thrust forwards. Again, get your elbow on the center line. Come across, hit the hand sword, keep the elbow below the hand, try not to hit like this. This is using your path of action. Okay? You have the choice of lowercase and uppercase um, use of this within that path of action. So try not to use a line, keep your elbow low. This obviously gives you a lot more protection too. Okay? And then you go into your forward bow again. Another thing is shoulder alignment. Try not to have your shoulders out. Keep your shoulders down. Okay? That's important because that anchors the arm to the body. Okay? And then come back for the next shot here. Okay? So, for me, I like to try and clean up and make sure my engineering is going to work for me. If my weapons hit resistance, I need those joints in alignment so that they are um, structurally sound. You want to hit somebody with a, a misaligned weapon, then you're going to end up damaging yourself. Okay? So, it's a really interesting uh, thing that goes on with the first part of this form because it's really teaching you basic mechanics and basic open hand and closed hand positions. Okay? I hope that helps. Thank you.